to Dr. Wallace, you explained that one of the ways that parents can try to prevent atopic dermatitis if their child's at risk is to use moisturizer and keep the skin healthy and moist and prevent the barrier from breaking down. You mentioned that Vaseline isn't really a moisturizer, it's more of a sealant. Um, the question that comes to mind for me is a lot of uh, commercially available moisturizers have that same ingredient of petroleum distillates that is Vaseline. Uh, are there particular ingredients to use or to avoid in a moisturizer, and are there any particular products that you use in your product, in your practice, that you feel like that? Well, you want products that have been studied and that the manufacturer will indicate is adding moisture to the skin. And there's various ways that that can be uh, um, composed in terms of the structure of the product. When I recommend products, I tell the patient to look for fragrance-free, that's a key word. But two products that I really like is Eucerin. It tends to be a very um, greasy feeling. Some people don't like that, but it works very well on very dry skin. And um, Alpha Carry has a product. Uh, there's a lot of different products on the market. And if you go to some of the professional websites, like my own American College of Allergy, Asthma, Immunology, you can certainly find a list of what those would be. And of course, the more milder or the creams, the ones that feel more pleasant, uh, could be used when the skin is looking totally normal. Once you have an acute uh, event in the skin and the eczema is broken down, the skin is broken down and you have active lesions, then you want a very thick, uh, almost greasy feeling moisturizer such as Eucerin because it's going to be much more effective on thickened, uh, lichenified, we call it, skin. So we'd recommend that. There's, there's a tip that I often give children and adults who have widespread eczema. Maybe their skin is very dry and cracked and they have just thickening every place. It get, can be an expensive disease because you know it takes a lot to cover the entire body. So how do you moisturize when the little bottles come and you may go through half a bottle in one application? So I often ask if they have a bathtub. And most people take showers, but they usually do have a bathtub. And I ask if they will give a soaking bath. And that's going to be about 15 minutes. And then I want them just to pat dry, leaving a layer of water on top. And then I want them to apply a very pure substance. This substance comes in gallon containers. And it's called shortening, like Crisco shortening, like you'd make pies with. Well, then you put that on the body. And it works beautifully. It is a sealant. It seals in the moisture. And it's inexpensive. It's pure. And the patients come back and just say, I can't thank you enough, Dr. Wallace, for giving me that tip. So that's one practical advice that I use. Another practical advice along the same line is many times eczema will become secondarily infected, for example, with staph and you have oozing, and you have weeping of the skin, and it's very red and angry looking. And so how do you take care of these recurrent episodes? For the acute ones, you might even need to prescribe an oral antibiotic, but you have identified the patient that is at risk. So I will oftentimes have them to that bath water add like a fourth to a half a cup of Clorox bleach. The Clorox bleach has a very good effect on reducing the colony count of the Staph aureus. And you might do that two or three times a week. And as the skin improves, maybe less frequent. But to keep that going as a method of controlling the amount of flora can go a long ways. And it's very inexpensive also. <music>